surviving skeptics at home and instant peace demanders abroad, Odormit has reason to feel satisfied. You could even say smugly satisfied. Any meeting at the White House is an important event for an Israeli Prime Minister, but none more so than the first. On Tuesday evening was the first for Ehud Olmert, the newly installed Prime Minister. A moment for him to win the confidence of the President and to convince him, I'm a man with whom you can do business. Two issues were prominent on the Olmert agenda for his inaugural Prime Minister President Tete Tete in his bid to get on an even keel with the Bush administration. Iran's drive for nuclear capability is searing deep into Israeli consciousness. Backed as it is, not merely by the consistent denials of the Holocaust voiced by the Iranian president and his remarks about Israel needing to be made to disappear. Olmert wanted not only to hear that the United States is indeed solidly committed to its pledge not to allow Iran to proceed perilously down that nuclear path, but that Israel need not to be at the forefront of such an international campaign. Olmert heard just that. We are committed to protecting Israel, but take a back seat, was the Washington message. Considerable comfort for Ed Olmert. But winning over the administration on the second issue on his agenda was more complex. It involves the vaunted Olmert plan for what has come to be known in Israeli political parlance as convergence a euphemism literally for a withdrawal from sizable chunks of the West Bank, including many of the outlying Jewish settlements that have been set up over the past 30 years, and to bring those settlers back into Israel or to transfer them into large settlement blocks near the 1967 border and around Jerusalem, areas which Olmert envisages remaining under Israeli control. The problem was to convince the president of the merit of his plan when Washington remains committed, first and foremost, to the internationally backed roadmap for peace and for negotiations with the Palestinians towards any new agreement, not unilateral Israeli action, as happened when Ariel Sharon last year led Israel out of Gaza lock, stock and barrel. Omid's task was to break the conundrum between Israel not seeing to be a naysayer to peace efforts, while yet pursuing a policy which seeks to bypass the give peace a chance now lobby. How in effect to keep peace now mongers at bay is an effort Israel wants to pursue not only in Washington. France, for instance, has been indulging in this kind of peace seduction effort, first with a gigantic pyrotechnic display off the Tel Aviv beach, and then by erecting a huge tent for peace in Jerusalem between the western Israeli and eastern Palestinian sides of town. Peace is emblazoned on the tent in 50 different languages, as if to say, see how great peace will be, succumb to its charms. That's what Paris is urging Israelis. But can peace be resurrected simply by being declared a noble goal? How anachronistic, how out of sync with on-ground realities. If there's one thing on which Israelis and Palestinians now concur, it's that there is no immediate peace horizon between them. The sobering experience endured by each people of a failed peace process has left them hankering for something else, something more pragmatic, something to help extricate them from confrontation now. This is in no way to underscore the arguments of the doom-laden anti-peace forces on both sides of the spectrum who contest that there is no way on earth that Jews and Arabs can ever sufficiently accommodate the other's interests in the single land and so successfully coexist as peaceful neighbors. It is simply to accept the reality of the mindset of the great majority of people on both sides, Israeli and Palestinian. Bold ideas is how George Bush called the Olmert plan, though he insisted that the final borders, for that read the full amount that Israel will need to withdraw in the West Bank, could only be permanently set through full-scale peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. Fine, said Olmert, we shall indeed try to talk to President Abbas, but we cannot wait indefinitely for the Palestinians to change. And ironically, it was here that Hamas and its steadfast insistence in not recognizing Israel that may have helped Olmert convince the Americans not to nix his convergence plan at source and to see it as running concurrently with efforts to make progress through negotiations with President Abbas. Hamas in power, in effect, reinforces the Olmert argument that negotiating a peace deal is simply not feasible at this stage. And there was a further boost, an interesting one for the Olmert position, when on the morning of the White House visit, 
Palestinian Prime Minister Ismail Haniya told the prestigious Tel Aviv daily Haaretz that Hamas is ready for a long-term ceasefire if Israel were only to withdraw back to the 1967 borders. To that, Ahmed could respond, yes, we do have our interim, long-term, permanent, temporary plan. It's called convergence. It involves that withdrawal on the West Bank unilaterally. It will guarantee long-term peace efforts much more than fruitless negotiations. That's the armored position. Instead of preparing to shoot down Israeli plans for withdrawal in the West Bank and removal of settlements, something incidentally which never happened not even once during the 10 years of the peace process, France and all friends of peace ought to be working out ways to hoist the Israeli government of Ehud Olmert on its own petard of the withdrawal plan. It's an opportunity for Europe and the United States to begin lining up again together to try to make sure that when Israel does carry out a West Bank withdrawal, it's as extensive as possible and as close as possible to the goals set in futile peacemaking endeavors, that is, to end the four decades of Israeli occupation. The green light given this week by Washington to the concept of unilateral withdrawal once the yellow light of attempted negotiations with the Palestinian president has been passed, is a good start for the Olmert vision. Now he will have to convince his people at home that he can implement his promise in practice, and also to convince the Palestinians that such a withdrawal is in their immediate interests as well. It allows them to get on with state building of their future state, with or without Hamas at the helm. Without either side, Israel or Hamas having to go through the unpalatable step of recognizing one another. Parallel unilateralism, it might be called. Is that not the future for peace? Not now, but peace one day between Israelis and Palestinians.